Most people in life are looking for how do I make a living and how to make a retirement with having. Every single one of us has multiple ideas for doing that. We sometimes go work for a company. We sometimes start our own business. We sometimes do a mix of both. We sometimes have a side income stream called mailbox money, which literally means we sell a product and we literally get a residual income coming to our house on a regular basis. It's sort of like what insurance companies do. But openly, we might be talking about an actual product, an actual thing that comes to the house, or an actual consumable, because if it's a consumable, then people need to have it regularly. It's sort of like our telephone bills or our water that comes to the house. It's something we regularly need in order to conduct a life. But in life, we have moments of time to make a change in life. We have moments of time to do something new, do something different, to utilize our old skill sets to become something new and renewed and improved based on the people that we associate with, the people that we start to mix and mingle with, or the people that we get back in touch with and say, hey, we sort of lost touch. Let's do this all over again and do it right this time. And in life, we have moments of time to do that. When we make those decisions, we are literally making a conscious choice that I'm going to love people, I'm going to honor people, I'm going to regard people, I'm going to look at their strengths, I'm going to look at their gifts, I'm going to look at their time, their talent, their treasure, and how can I help them and they can help me to put my life together as much as they put their life together. In moments of time, we have opportunities to really sell someone something. But the truth is we're always selling something. Every single human being on the face of this planet is selling something to someone at some point in some time. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, literally, we get up and we sell ourselves on having something to eat. And we tell ourselves we've got to take a bath. And we literally go into the next phase of our life, which is selling ourselves on going to an employment of some kind that produces for us an income or a revenue that funds our lives. It also produces for us extra income or what we call discretionary income in order which to invest in other properties, invest in our retirement or 401ks, or invest in things that we have for our home to make our home beautified and make it feel like a home where we can be and where we can bring our friends and our family and the people that we selectively choose to participate in the most intimate aspects of our life and our situations whether it be the birth of a new child, whether it be the celebration of a birthday of one of their teenagers, or literally whether it be a death in a family, which we don't expect. You see, in life, we have moments of time to have those people around us and help those people helping us, but they're not there to do us any harm. They're there to lift us up, to raise our souls, and to make the world a better place through the love, the kindness, and the peace that they help to produce in our spirit. And when our spirits are peaceful, we go on in life with great success. When our, peer, when our spirits are in turmoil because someone is hazing, harassing us, or putting us in the middle of a mobbing-style hate crime, it's difficult to go on in life. We really want to look at that in this election year about how do we protect people from the mob? How do we protect people from overstepping their bounds? How do we protect people from participating in illegal, immoral, illicit games on other people's lives, actually making that person, that human being, a target of prey, much like a hunter is going in after a deer in the woods, in the forest. You see, a deer in headlights is not what we want to feel like in our adult age. We want to feel like that we're in control, that we know what's going on, and that openly we can talk about these things openly and frankly in a forum like mine, Magic and Mayhem, that talks not only about the magic and amazement of God and how he blesses my life, even in the most humble of situations, I've got tons of stories now, but also in the mayhem of life when other people are overstepping their bounds in my life. And if they do it in my life, they're likely to do it in yours as well. You see, it only takes one monstrous idea to change a nation. And what we really need in the presidency is someone who takes away the monsters. Where Lily says, we're not going to allow monsters to reign in this land. We're not going to allow monsters to be illegal. We're not going to tolerate anything illegal, even if it's meant with good intentions. We're not going to tolerate anything like that that harms another human being's life. You see, in life, we have moments of time to tell the absolute truth about what we did versus what someone else did. And the true liar is the one that can lie so well that they've even lied to themselves about what they've done. The reality is that the liars ruin this land. The liars steal our property. The liars take our documents. The liars bequeath us nothing in return. And openly, our own bequeathments to our own people that we love are our literal federal right under federal law, that we have the right to give our property, our land, or anything that we own to the people that we love and choose, not have it stolen from us by some land mass or some land-grubbing politician or any other person like that. You see, that's what the forefathers meant when they were putting that Constitution together, that we literally have rights here in America to be free, to pursue happiness, to find love, and to pursue the best employment and resources we can to provide for not only ourselves, 
but our lineage, lineage and our legacy going forward. Whatever that may be, whatever we choose that to be, however long that may go, based on our own love choices. You know, there are some people who find the perfect love match, but in reality, they have no children. Now, excuse me for itching their nose, but it happens sometimes, and I'm a transparent guy. But in life, we have moments of time to make the difference for people, to allow them to be who they are in this moment, to see who they've been, and also to get and understand where they can go with the right people in their lives. In this moment of time, I'd like to remind you of who you are. You are a person who lives in America, probably, if you're watching this video, a land of liberty, of love, of justice, of freedom, and of freedom to allow other people to have the same. In this moment in time, we're heading into an election year, and the one thing you have to really be looking at amongst the candidates is who is going to allow you to live your life to the fullest so you choose without its harm to any other life out there. You see, your religion doesn't give you the right to harm another human being. Your faith in God and your belief about what he's done and what he doesn't done doesn't give you the right to oversee and supersede the Lord's plan for people's lives. There's so many conditions we have out there, yet the religious right thinks that God didn't make those things, and clearly he did because they're still literally going on. So when we talk about rights and when we talk about freedom and when we talk about religion and we talk about property and when we talk about personhood, we have to all go back to the U.S. Constitution that literally gave us all the human equality of freedom in this land. Now, thanks for listening. This is Blake Henson of Blaze Communications, LLC, a marketing firm, a one-time language institute, and now a political consultancy in this new time and new opportunity where other people are coming forward, putting their hats in the rain to become politicians, to become president, who are worth fighting for. Thanks for listening.